So if I was to ask you, what is the most dangerous thing to your Iman? What's the biggest threat? You might think about circumstances, major sins. You might think social media. You might think of bad friends. You, you'll think about certainly things that are haram, things that are forbidden and prohibited, and some of the things that we've already spoken about, right? Like adultery, uh, you know, fornication, drinking alcohol, uh, theft, all these things that we said that Iman would even depart from a person if they are guilty of these things. But listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said is the greatest threat to a person's Iman. So the Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith that's narrated in a tirmidhi he says, مَا ذِئْبَانِ جَائِعَانِ أُرْسِلَا فِي غَنَمٍ بِأَفْسَدَ لَهَا مِنْ حِرْسِ الْمَرْئِ عَلَى الْمَالِ وَالشَّرَفِ لِدِينِهِ He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there is nothing more dangerous to a person's faith like two wolves that are let free amongst the flock of sheep. Imagine what the Prophet ﷺ is saying. Imagine two wolves that go into a flock of sheep. He said وسلم, the two most dangerous things, those two wolves to your faith, your faith being the sheep, are the love of wealth and the love of fame that a person has. The love of wealth and the love of fame are the two most dangerous threats to your Iman, to your faith. So it's not a major sin, it's not some horribly haram thing, it's wealth and fame, the love for wealth and the love for fame. Now is wealth a bad thing? No, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to have the upper hand instead of the lower hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna wa fil akhirati hasana, to give us the best of this world and the best of the next. But if a person has an uncontrollable desire for this world, for materialism, and they constantly pursue more and more and more wealth, then they're going to find themselves in a situation where they will resort to unethical things, where they will start to place expectations in that wealth, and that will distance themselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes having a lot of money changes a person's personality. Well, you know, wealth can actually change a person's behavior. So they'll start to resort to some of the things that we've spoken about uh, in the past, the, these major sins that we've spoken about in previous episodes. And then the desire for fame, if I wanna be famous and it's all about the fame, then a person starts to resort to unethical behavior to get that fame. Or when a person gets that fame, once again they change and they find it very easy to resort to some of the major sins that have been uh, described. So what's the solution? Number one, the uncontrollable desire for wealth. The Prophet ﷺ gave us a few things to deal with, with materialism. First, he taught us وسلم, charity. It sounds simple enough, but if you dictate on yourself to give a certain amount of charity every time you earn, then it's going to be routine and it'll be uh, already baked into anything that you're going to receive. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ taught us not to be extravagant. So the difference between needing something and wanting something, to check your extravagance. Number three, as we learn in the month of Ramadan in fasting, the importance of sometimes breaking off from something that is available to you of this dunya as a means of gaining a greater appreciation for it. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, if you have a comfortable bed, don't always sleep on it. Take a night off and sleep on the floor. The next, the next day you're going to appreciate the comfort of that bed. When you fast, you appreciate the blessing of that food. So a person becomes content with what they have. Number four, the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to constantly be grateful for what is given to us. As for the love for fame, the Messenger Sallallahu taught us that we need to make sure that we never pursue something for the sight of the people. And he taught us that riya, showing off, particularly doing something to be seen by the people is a hidden shirk. It's actually a hidden form of polytheism because you turn those people into gods by acting in accordance with their sight. And essentially what we learn from our scholars of Tazkiya, our scholars of spirituality, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, a person has to make the sight of Allah more beloved to them than the sight of the people. So secret good deeds, essentially try to get famous in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the angels that he boasts to, and forget about being famous with the people. So again, the two wolves that are let out on sheep that would d destroy a person's iman are an unchecked love of wealth and fame. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from both. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the wealth and the fame of the hereafter in the presence of his angels and our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. See you all next time, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.